A portion of this video was sponsored by Night Zookeeper. What is the morning routine that allows me to run a business, homeschool, and do a motherhood without losing my sanity? My morning routine often changes with the season of life or business that I'm in, but I have found with certain habits, I'm able to have calm, peaceful, happy mornings with my children and be a happy mommy. And I'm able to balance homeschooling with being a single mother and running my own business. This is a routine for productive work and a happy, calm mommy, which will then flow into happy children. The very moment you wake up in the morning, get out of bed and do something. For me, that's walking my dog, but it could be taking a shower, running a load of laundry, or cleaning the kitchen counters. Having a wake up task will prevent you from wasting time scrolling on your phone or laying there half asleep. I find this gives me a sense of accomplishment and pride first thing in the morning, and that feeling makes it more likely that I'll do the same thing the next day. Now, if you want to make morning walks a successful habit, you have to make sure everything you need is right by your bed or door. This is my dedicated cold weather walking outfit right on down to the wool socks, which are a necessity for me. So there's two parts to having a successful walk in the morning. Part one is having all of this laid out and ready to go the night before. I have a special place in my closet just for my morning walking gear. So when I get back and I'm ready to change all of the stuff from the socks to the, to the hat goes right inside that bin because this is my stuff that is dedicated to that walking experience and I don't want it to be lost or misplaced in any way because that will prevent me from walking the next day. The second part is making sure you have the right gear for your walking season. Let's go through my walking outfit so you can make sure you have everything you need to be successful on your walk. Let's start with something that I did not even know about since we grew up stuffing our clothes with plastic bags to stay warm, a base layer. So a base layer is kind of like long johns. It's going to be what you wear against your skin and it's normally tied against your skin. So this is Moreno wool. It is very warm and I can wear this by itself. And as long as there's no wind, I'll be completely fine wearing this in the cold. So this is definitely different from wearing leggings and a shirt. This is a specific type of material that is made to keep you warm. If you feel like you've been going out wearing a few layers and you're still cold, you need to pick up some Moreno wool. Now over here, I have my aloe yoga sweatpants and these are really warm. I wear these year round, at least in California, um, but they're just sweatpants. I mean, I don't think there's anything particularly special about them, but the reason why I like them is because I can wear my knee brace underneath these. Even getting the knee brace itself was big for me because I was having pain when I was walking a few years ago um, because of weight. So if you have something medical that you need for your walk, make sure you take care of that. This is also a smart wool hat. So this hat is not any hat, you know? All hats are not created the same, which I've learned. So this is made of 47% Moreno wool. And so it keeps your head very, very warm. Even if you don't have everything Moreno from top to bottom, if you have this like a very, very warm hat, you can keep a lot of heat from escaping. Most of the time I'm wearing this jacket. I'm not wearing something with a hood. And this is simply a fleece jacket. And so what you're supposed to do is wear your base layer wear a layer of fleece, and then if it's rainy, you can wear something waterproof like a poncho. All right, let's talk about socks and shoes. Anything that's going to prevent you from taking your walk, you want to take care of. One thing is comfort, getting comfortable shoes. Mine are all worn out, but these are my walking shoes. Now I noticed that as it got colder, my ankles were cold because I was wearing these type of 40 socks and also because these are made to be breathable. So the first thing I did was put on some nice wool socks. A simple change of having the right socks made it easier for me to get up and go on my walk every morning. But then my feet were getting too sweaty. By the way, these are like 10 times warmer. But anyway, my feet were getting too sweaty and I wanted to change back to my regular socks. And I remember that I had bought these for hiking. And so they're very supportive walking shoes. They're heavy, you know, they're not for running, but since they are so high up, they were keeping my ankles warm and allowed me to wear thinner socks so that my feet would not be sweaty. And finally, if it's getting really cold and you want to put on gloves, get yourself a good pair of gloves that 
have these little parts here so that you can still use your cell phone. Now, why walk? Well, walking reduces stress hormones and stimulates the production of endorphins, which enhance your mood. I come back from my walks energized, stress-free, and ready to greet my children with positive energy and a smile. Walking also has surprising business benefits. Researchers at Stanford found that creative thinking improves while people are walking and shortly thereafter. So if you've ever paced back and forth to think or found a solution after a long walk, you've probably experienced this, which is maybe why the next part of my routine is so successful. After the walk, I go directly into power hour. This is the hour or so time period where I stay hyper-focused and task-oriented. My phone does not exist. If my children are awake, they are doing their own morning routine. And if this video gets 500 likes within the first couple of days, I'll come out with their routine and how I got them to be completely independent in the mornings from getting dressed to making and cleaning up after their own breakfast. It takes time for children to adjust to your new expectations for them. So in the meantime, I suggest starting with something simple and enticing such as when you wake up in the morning, get fully dressed and make yourself cereal. And then you may get on your tablet until I am finished my work. Technology can be used for good. Now I wouldn't have children use it first thing in the morning long term, but whenever our routine gets out of whack, it's just such an easy way to motivate children to get up and get dressed and to leave you in peace. And if you have really fun educational programs for them to do, this becomes additional learning time. In my last couple of videos, I told you about my Zuki which is a full language arts curriculum hidden in a fantastically fun game. Children learn everything from grammar to sentence structure as they watch cartoons and progress through the night zoo. If you use the link in my description box for a limited time, you can get a free seven day trial and 50% off an annual subscription. Of course, there are other educational programs and apps, but be really careful on what you're spending your money on. Night Zookeeper ends up being just five bucks per month, which is a lot cheaper than most of these apps that kids download that you end up paying for by accident. And this is a full curriculum. It's actually browser based. So there's no ads, no in-app purchases, no mindlessness at all. But as for me, I am going down a list, knocking off a business or motherhood task. During this time, I do tasks that have high importance, but don't take that much time. This morning, one of those tasks is to put clothes and fabric in storage because my children keep pulling them out to do fashion shows and building forts, which creates more mess and more stress for me. So this for me is a high important task. Now I said this isn't a cleaning video, but I will have significantly less work to do immediately after storing these items. Now, as you can imagine, it did not take just five minutes to do this whole task. I've been doing this project over a few days, but this morning I knew the final three boxes would just take a few minutes to put away, so I did. But mainly my tasks during power hour are business related. This morning I'm invoicing a company who owes me money, but I have a quick invoicing system and this company is great about paying as soon as they get the invoice. So again, it's a low lift, high reward task. So I put it in power hour. Okay, let's talk about this hair. Hair can take up a lot of time for women, but if you're spending a half hour, an hour a day on your hair, that's a lot of time that you could be spent doing other household tasks or building your business. So we have to find ways to simplify this hair process during this season. Now there are seasons where you can spend an hour a day on your hair, but this is not that season for a lot of us. Last year after I cut my locks, I found the power of wigs. I did not know that so many women were out here wearing wigs, okay? I thought that was all their real hair. So I bought five wigs at varying price points and I ended up just really liking two of them. So here's what I do on a weekly basis after my hair has been washed, conditioned, throw on some heat protectant. I'm going to use this Revlon brush blow dryer. So right now I have it on low. Guys, I don't know what is in this. I mean, I do, the ingredients are there. I'm trying to see if this part is straight. Okay, the big brush. So what I'm saying for my own hair is similar with the kids, just find one or two styles that you can do quickly. I don't aim for perfection, I aim for done, okay? Done is better than perfect. Let me hear you say that again. You're an entrepreneur, done is better than perfect. Why am I not braiding it? 
because it's easier to twist. Well, how does it look? I don't know if you can tell, but if I would have put the styling gel throughout the twist, like it would have looked probably, I don't know, just neater and probably would hold longer. I just don't like to have a lot of product in my hair, so I don't do that. So that's my own personal preference. Now I just need to do the other side. Okay, so I finished this side. And as you can see, I use a lot of gel on this side. So now that my hair is done underneath, I wear it like this a lot. So if you see me in public, most likely my hair will be like this. But I also, depending on the outfit that I'm wearing, I like to throw on this Afro wig. It's got clips and it just takes like two seconds to throw on. <sighs> and then all of a sudden you're, you're done. Look at this. All of a sudden I'm ready for the day. Shed some light on me. See, a wig can make a big difference. And I know some people aren't a fan of this wig and that's okay. I love it. I love this look. But, so this is the other wig I decided to keep. I mostly wear this one on Instagram. I actually, I don't really wear this one out because I have to wear a wig cap, which is really tight around my head and I don't like that, so. That's why I'm not wearing this one a lot these days. But again, it's got like the baby hair up here. What? 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 Come, come on now. Don't play with me. What? You look good! Uh, come on now. Come on now. Braids done. I'm not someone who can sit for eight hours to get my hair done. No, I cannot, okay? So, mommies, if you're trying to get ready faster, if you felt like you've been kind of bleh in a bleh mommy space, girl, you better go get you some wig. Look at this wig. Look at this wig. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, so and now that the hair is out of the way, let's talk about the outfits. If you want to get dressed quickly in the morning, you have to have a closet with the right number of outfits that make you feel beautiful and comfortable. Too many choices can overwhelm you. You want to save your brain power and decision making for important matters, but having too little choices of clothes that are clean and flattering, and you'll spend extra time trying to piece together an outfit. This is my full closet. It's about eight dresses and nine outfits, plus my sports clothes. And all the other clothes that I won't be wearing in the next month or so, I put in bins so that I won't be overrun with laundry or decisions. If you check out my Instagram, you will see that I wear the same outfits repeatedly. They all come from three or four brands that I've found that I love. Another tip is to hang your clothes in your closet as complete outfits. If there's a bra I need for a particular outfit, I'll even put that with the outfit so I don't accidentally use it and put it in the dirty clothes with an outfit that I really didn't need it for. And finally, body shapers. They will save so many of your outfits that you may be found unflattering. I just learned about body shapers a few years ago and they have allowed me to purchase many more clothing that I would not have normally purchased. I am increasingly fasting until 10 or 11 a.m. for breakfast, but if I do have something, it's generally a smoothie or juice concoction that is packed with nutrients. I'm always battling with low iron, so in addition to vitamins in the morning, I try to make green veggies a part of my breakfast. If you have low energy in the mornings, feed yourself the nutrients you need instead of coffee it can be hard to eat a full meal but there are lots of healthy stuff you can put in a juice or a smoothie and now that I've exercised taken care of walking the dog got the household and business tasks taken care of I am mentally free to homeschool and take my children out without feeling burdened if this video was helpful please consider giving it a like and subscribing and if you want to support me while giving your kids a fun language arts curriculum to learn by playing Visit the link in the description box to try Night Zookeeper today.